Yo, what's good? What's good? I'm back. Yours truly, the one and only Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast, aka Triple P, aka the Common Sense Podcast, your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and much, much more. Today, I'm going to react to a video um, about woke Hollywood is imploding. But before we get into that, let's give you a word from Dizzle. That's right, that Dizzle. Dizzle is a premium luxury liqueur mixed with agave tequila, French cognac, and orange liquor mango mix. Throw your Dizzle on ice, and it's nice. If you want to order your very own bottle or bottles of Dizzle premium luxury liqueur, go to DizzleBrand.com, click on our locations, click on one of the top three website links. I recommend Emilio's Beverage. Must be 21 and over. Shipping and handling is included. Also, there's actual store locations in California, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Arkansas. If you're located in any one of those states, just scroll below those website links on our locations and you'll see the actual store locations in those states as well. And don't forget the Dizzle Brand merch on DizzleBrand.com. Click on store or go to Etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash Dizzle Brand. That's Etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash Dizzle Brand. All right, let's get into it. Woke Hollywood is imploding. Among us could ever forget what was without a doubt the single best thing ever said to an audience of woke Hollywood leftists. Oh, Apple roared into the, the TV game with a morning show. A superb <laughs> drama, yeah. A superb drama about the importance of dignity and doing the right thing, made by a company that runs sweatshops in China. So, well, you say you're woke, but the companies you work for, I mean, unbelievable. Apple, Amazon, Disney. If ISIS started a streaming service, you'd call your agent, wouldn't you? So, if you do win an award Shit. tonight, don't use it as a, a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. Most of you spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So, if you win, right, come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your god, and f*** off. Okay? So <laughs> well, as it turns out, Ricky Gervais was speaking for a whole oh, man. lot of Love people. It. Woke Hollywood Love is it. imploding. <laughs> We're going to see how more people than ever before are turning their backs on Hollywood entertainment, resulting in massive and unprecedented revenue loss and the inevitable end of so-called woke entertainment <laughs> itself. You are not going to want to miss this. Last week, I reported on the latest box office bomb coming from Disney, and it features Disney's first gay main character as part of their ongoing effort at pushing LGBT issues in their audiences. The box office result was so bad, it was Disney's second worst opening weekend ever. And when all said and done, more than 100 million projected to lose Disney upwards of a hundred million dollars. Nice. Needless to say, Disney's CEO, Bob Chappick, one of the biggest proponents of woke Disney, has been fired and replaced with his predecessor, Bob Iger, to try to get Disney back on track, which apparently involves abandoning all of this wokeness. But unfortunately, the woke virus goes way beyond Disney, infecting the whole of the entertainment industry. Now, some argue that wokeness began to dominate Tinseltown right after the mega producer Harvey Weinstein's sexual abuse antics were revealed, ushering in a radical Me Too movement among Hollywood's rank and file. Others point to the George Floyd incident, while others simply see it as the latest chapter in Hollywood's decades-long leftist bent. Whatever the origins, wokeness has swept through the industry in the form of hyper-diverse casting, censorship, 
and identity politics on steroids. Yep. Hollywood has even turned to virtue shaming as a form of marketing, like what Viola Worst Davis marketing ever. did with the latest Wakanda, the woman king. It will just be. Uh, and before he gets into that, this is why I got to chime in. I do marketing and advertising for a living. I've done it for the last 10 years. Desta, I'm going to continue to say this. It's the worst marketing strategy ever is trying to like shame people into buying your product or service. Like I promote music for a lot of musicians. I'm not going to shame them into buying my services because they need my services more than I need them. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing. Like we don't need Disney movies. We don't need Disney to be entertained. It's all other forms of entertainment besides Disney. Every musician needs marketing promotions. You know, so let's keep it moving. A moment if people don't come see the movie. Right. Hey. You hurt? Okay. That's right. Because you're sending a very clear message to a machine called Hollywood. Mm -hmm. A machine called Hollywood um, is interested in green. So if you don't come see it, then you're sending a message that black women cannot lead the box office globally. Hey. That you are supporting that narrative. Right. And if you want to normalize it, Come see it the same way you would, you know, um, the same way you would Black Panther, Spider -Man. Iron Man, Spider-Man, yeah. or mm -hmm. any other movie that doesn't have any of us in it. Yeah. That's complete bullshit. Why can't it just be, I'm not interested in the fucking movie? Why can't it be, it doesn't pique my interests? I'm not fucking intrigued. There's a lot of movies coming out in Hollywood I could give a rat's ass about John Wick. Oh, I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for John Wick. But there's a lot of movies. I mean, even the last couple Fast and Furiouses, it was like, uh, we don't seen it all. So what? You know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of these Marvel movies that been coming out, I, I wasn't running to go see Thor, Love and Thunder. And I still ain't running to go see it now. I, I I could care less about watching Thor Love and Thunder, to be honest with you. I watched all the other Thor movies. I could care less about this movie. And, you know, it's 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 just not good. It's not in it. Why can't it be that we just don't see the movie as something entertaining to us? Everybody ain't trying to waste their money on non-entertaining movies. Let's keep it moving. Or one or two of us in it. <laughs> now just think about that. We were just told that if we don't come out to see this movie, we're basically racist, sexist. Exactly. We're supporting the narrative that black women can't. Terrible marketing strategy. Silence Worst marketing lying. strategy ever. Well, there's just one problem with all of this. No one wants it. As it turns out, woke Hollywood, frankly, sucks. And less and less people are willing to spend their hard-earned dollars on what Hollywood is producing. According to the New York Post, Hollywood of course is they are. upwards of a $160 billion hit since the <laughs> coronavirus. That's how devastated Hollywood has been of late. We saw this implosion most recently with Netflix, with its market value recently cratering nearly 30%, losing $42 billion in value. Yes, that's billion with a B. They lost $42 billion in value after the it's company crazy. announced that their paying subscribers shrank for the first time since 2011. Even Elon Musk recognized that that loss in subscribers corresponded to the increasingly woke content that Netflix was producing. I mean, who and you know what? They're right. Because why did I cancel my Netflix subscription? Um, because of that bullshit documentary where Colin Kaepernick was comparing the NFL to fucking slavery. That woke bullshit. Like, there, half of the NFL is it white dudes, too. Did you forget that part, Colin? Um, but let's keep it moving. Who could forget the radically controversial film Cuties, which sparked a massive hashtag cancel Netflix campaign 
over the concern that children, particularly prepubescent children, were being overtly sexualized in that program. Or another show, No Good Neck, was canceled after just a single season because it was so repulsively woke. Doesn't look like anything I would want to see. Here is that even Hollywood insiders are recognizing this. They're starting to turn on the woke mind virus big time. Wait till you see how. But first, are you looking for a way to stay informed and up to date on the news? And I mean real news, not the woke propaganda that's out there. If so, I've got something that's absolutely perfect for you. My fake news antidote. I've compiled my personal research resources to help people stay informed and feel optimistic about the future of our nation. Plus, they're also designed to give you the tools to identify propaganda and false information so that you can make well-informed decisions on important issues. Right now, when you sign up for a 14-day free trial to my Insiders Club, you'll get my fake news antidote as a completely free gift. Insiders Club grants you access to more content where I dive into all the things I can't discuss on YouTube, plus other trainings, resources, and more. So don't miss out on this amazing opportunity. Click on that link below and sign up now for a 14-day free trial of my Insiders Club and get my list of news research resources as your free gift at insidersclub.turleytalks.com. Here's Quentin Tarantino and Bill Maher recently blasting woke Hollywood. There has become a thing that's gone on, it seems like in this, especially this last year, where ideology is more important than art. Right? Yeah. Well, certainly to the awards. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it, it, it's like, you know, ideology right. trumps art. And that, ideology right. trumps individual Terrible. effort. Ideology trumps good. Ideology trumps yeah, entertainment. Tiny. I have yeah. really, really appreciated the way you pushed back when anyone tried to stifle you, shut you up, shame you, bully you. They tried it with the last one, with Once yeah. Upon a Time in the Hollywood, some bullshit about Margot Robbie doesn't have enough lines mm -hmm. and you do what I wish other people would do instead of apologizing like a little pussy you say <laughs> I don't agree with your assessment yeah yeah if somebody brings up something that yeah. actually is legitimate <laughs> I'll even have a conversation with them about it because it, I'm actually that's what people do and I don't have to even agree with you oh, on that's one that's side of the point oh. that's an interesting point I was really well put I'd like in in Hollywood ideology trumps art Ideology trumps effort. Ideology trumps talent. Ideology trumps craft. The comedian Bill Burr recently pointed this out. This is how screwed up my country is right now. Do you, you know that, you know, Brian Cranston, right? That dude did a movie. He played a quadriplegic. <laughs> and people gave him shit. <laughs> Being like, why is there an able-bodied person playing a quadriplegic? <laughs> It's, like, it's because it's called acting. <laughs> Dumb <laughs> See, if he was a quadriplegic playing a quadriplegic, that's not acting. <laughs> that's just laying there saying shit that someone else wrote. So tell us, what, what did you do to prepare for the role? Well, I dove head first into the shallow end of a pool when I was 23. I feel like I've been preparing for this role for my whole life. <laughs> crazy um they're right we oh, at least i do me and millions of other people when we go to watch tv shows and watch movies we don't want to be lectured on ideologies we want to be entertained um you know there's enough lecturing and ideologies and other forms of things that you know like it's just like sports too like that's why sports has started to crumble like when i want to watch sports i want to watch sports i don't want to have to deal with political debates and ideologies and views when i watch sports that's what politics is for but they're bringing politics into every aspect of entertainment and every aspect of the workplace that they can bring and it's not good it's not good um because politics is it's a very emotional subject like religion you know Reli religious people get very emotional when you tell them there's no evidence or proof of god or jesus christ or any of these religions being factual and you know 
same thing with um you know these other topics they they get really really touchy you know what i'm saying so um yeah once again thank you for tuning in paul pick a podcast and i'm out